Hello my soccer universe, let's summarize the games of the weekend as I am shooting before the Monday evening game in the Bundesliga but I think there's enough to talk about and then I will pop this one in and talk also about the table and then we get a nice round video so if you uh, feel that the background is changing or the lighting is changing yes now I'm shooting it in the morning, uh, Monday morning which we have a day off, I like that part as well, it's also day of the child so do something nice. We will do something else with our children today. Um, I'm wearing Dortmund uh, because as, as, as we see they probably had one of the better performances of this weekend and I haven't worn them too much. Uh, the good news is I have two more Bundesliga jerseys coming my, my way actually of teams that I care for so uh, that's nice but um, let's get before we go to go, go to Bundesliga, I just, I just quickly want to get in the Austrian Cup, uh, where Salzburg won against Lustenau 5 0 Yeah, duh. Uh, that was exactly what I expected. Salzburg is usually steamrolling every opponent in the cup final, and if you get some of our from the from second league, I wouldn't um, expect anything else. The one thing that bugged me, and if you see it, maybe look it up. This was the first trophy presentation that I saw in Corona times. And you know, they had this big mat on the floor where there was seemingly a circle where every player could stand in. It's all properly socially distanced, and they get the trophy. They are all spread out, yeah, lifting up the trophy, and then the captain is Ulma is handing it like this to the next guy. This was ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's not because of that, it's because they all played so nice because of Lusk Gate. Uh, it just bugs the sh of me. Anyway, let's go to the Bundesliga. Um, where I saw actually a whole lot more than I expected to, uh, which was, um, I guess, okay, and the Bundesliga round uh, delivered much more than I expected. Not the Friday e evening, and we just saw a few highlights. Um, first half, I think the only chance was to Freiburg. Um, the only, sh the first shot on goal was a a a actually a kick by the keeper or something like a really uh, awful, but Freiburg hold being defensively, Leverkusen trying to attack and cannot find through. Harvard finds then the goal. It's all the high half. Harvard showed Freiburg too late decides, yeah, we better take part in the game. So Leverkusen runs away, 1 0 win us. Uh, Saturday, uh, Wolfsburg Frankfurt. Remember Frankfurt having a game where they should have steamrolled um, Freiburg and only played 3 3. Now almost the opposite hap uh, hap happened here. Wolfsburg, by far the better team for most, most of the time. But Frankfurt gets a first uh, half penalty, which I think is all right, but I could see that some might argue, argue with, that, with that one. Arnold Silva steps up and converts. Second half, uh, all one way traffic. All one way traffic. Um, and Wolfsburg gets the equalizer through Mbabu. And speaking of Wolfsburg, uh, note the jerseys. The V Dub logo is in rainbow colors for diversity. I think uh, looks actually better this way than uh, with the white sponsor I have, have to say now even then because my uh, older daughter like like as much I even looked it up you can get it at Wolfsburg store for 50 bucks I thought that was actually a reasonable price I didn't look into shipping and as I said if I wouldn't have gotten the two Bundesliga jerseys uh, re recently I might have uh, pulled the trigger on that one anyway I don't like the whole X design in, 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 in any case Anyway, Wolfsburg is attacking but cannot really get something and then it's Daichi Kamada who gets the uh, winning goal for Frankfurt after Wolfsburg really, especially the first half, they missed chances that I think the writing was on the wall. So Frankfurt uh, gets a win where they should have lost and uh, the other day when they should have won, yeah. It's good for them, let's put it that way. Um, Hertha Augsburg... <sighs> Not that it was a good Hertha performance in any regard, but Augs Augsburg is just so timid. So uh, Dilorosan and then late Piontek uh, scored. The Piontek goal was the first goal from open play in this season for him. Everything else he scored from, from a penalty. Don't want to say much more on that. Um, Mainz Hoffenheim uh, ends with a 1 0 win by Hoffenheim. Um, Hoffenheim clearly the better team in the first and the second half. Mainz for 65 minutes dominates, dominates, dom dominates. Uh, even get, gets a goal that is chalked off, I think, for offside. And so Bebu's um, goal is the winning goal in that one. Uh, Schalke Bremen. Schalke is 
in horrific form. I mean, they have to be glad that they already have so, so many points. They would be in serious relegation trouble if they continue this way. Werder, also not all that great. This was not the great, great game, but it was a great goal to win it all. Uh, in the first half, Leonardo beaten could. Um, the ball was collected in mid, mid, mid midfield rush, it's a play, it's out, Bittenkurt and uh, pulls in, and a wonderful shot, make it 1-0 for Bremen, and Bremen hangs on, yes, Schalke showed some um, signs that uh, they actually are a football team, but to be honest, it was not a good showing from them, and Werder Bremen gets another big win, and now we have in the midweek Frankfurt uh, at Bremen, so that might be Bayern against Düsseldorf. <laughs> uh, I know why this was the match of the day, because this ended 3-3 last season. No, this was never, never in doubt for me uh, how this will go. Uh, and Düsseldorf actually played into Bayern's card by playing a rather open and, you know, trying to play nice, which all credit to them. But against Bayern, this is suicide. Uh, and Bayern really in almost in 15 minutes um, intervals in the first half scored. First it was a Zanka Ong, Ong goal after a shot by Pavard and Pavard gets his goal. Lewandowski finally gets a goal against Düsseldorf. This is the only Bundesliga team that he has not netted against so far. And he even adds a fourth one in the 50th and two minutes later Alfonso David makes it 5-0 and then it was just petering out. I have to say at that time uh, I actually did not want to see that game necessarily, but since my younger daughter uh, came down with a cold ridge, which I'm also feeling now. It's, it's about to get summer and we have the coldest weather since uh, like early April. It's, uh, I'm actually getting, getting, getting cold wearing, wearing the shorts for the video. I'm gonna put the hockey shirt that on my Twitter and Facebook you'll see. I post every day the jersey that I'm wearing and for the videos I'm changing. So she was sitting on me and that's why I could watch most of the Bundesliga because she came really to me uh, to cuddle and watch. Then she fell asleep for two hours and then we finished watching and when the Bayern game was really already 5-0, we played some cards together. It was actually a very nice afternoon. I was very happy with that one. Um, and on Sunday, um, yeah, it was similar. I expected that the big boys will win easily and Gladbach Union, Gladbach came out to play and actually had some record set because the first goal was the 3,000th goal for Borussia Mönchengladbach in the Bundesliga through Florian Neuhaus. They had a few chances before, but here Neuhaus, he really built this one and it went to the inside of the post in. And from that moment on, I knew how this is going. Um, I really like the two, uh, the Tyram and player really were in good form. Uh, in there, Tyrann makes it 2-0 before the half, uh, then Union gets one back. Is there some excitement coming? No, because Marcus Tyrann, after another assist by player, uh, makes it 3-1. And then player himself, uh, probably, was this the best goal? I also like the 2-0. Uh, there, there were some nice goals in there, but what Ben Zabaini, uh, who I actually started really liking, um, assisted and player just puts, uh, I think he hits it with, uh, with his ankle, and goes nicely in. They were then celebrating after game in front of all the cardboard fans, which yeah, uh, sounded, looked a little bit funny, but Gladbach gets a 4-1 win. This is the best season of Gladbach in, in 36 years. So putting that into perspective, they already have more points and more goals scored than all of last season, where they kind of collapsed towards the end of it. Um, then uh, the Dortmund against Paderborn game. This was the weirdest first half ever. A, no goals, and B, one single foul. This has never happened in Bundesliga his history. Not a single foul. But it seemed uh, Dortmund being really wasteful with their chances, um, seemingly completely off target. Well, Thornton Hazard breaks the deadlock in the 51st, the first 54th and 51st. Um, after, you know, uh, it rebounded and he just had to put it in, in, into the empty net and then all hell broke loose. Jaden Sancho, it was the Sancho show, makes it uh, three minutes later, 2-0. Uh, then a penalty is given and it, it was for a long time, uh, the 2-0, the, the penalty was of Emre Can was for, come, 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 come down, down and box, it hits his elbow. Not happy with that one, but yeah, Hünemeyer makes it 1-2, game on, no. 
Sancho says absolutely no. Then Hakimi scores one, and then in the last two minutes, Schmelzer and Sancho add two more to a complete utter destruction of Paderborn. And Borussia Dortmund getting a little bit of uh, vindication for their kind of tough loss against Bayern because they didn't play all that badly, but they saw that Bayern outclassed them in many ways. So the Köln against Leipzig game was entertaining, but only for about 60 minutes, I have to say. Um, it started with a good chance for Leipzig uh, that was botched. Then uh, Köln through Cordoba gets a uh, rather nice 1-0. Um, he just takes the rebound. And uh, I actually thought, yeah, maybe Köln can get something from it. But after a nice cross from Angelino, Patrick Schick in the 20th equalizer. At that point, Cordoba was already getting injured. So... As soon as he went off and Modest came on, everything kind of turned to his Leipzig's way. And Nkunku, after another good assist by Lima, um, was a positioning error, I have to say. Makes it 2-1 for Leipzig ahead of the half. Um, right after the half, uh, it was a free kick for Köln. The Gulashi uh, catches and th makes the throw out and uh, right on the path of Timo Werner, who just runs clear on goal from his own half. Makes it 3-1, then Anthony Modest pulls one back. And I thought in the 55th, and I thought, yeah, this might be a really nice uh, long distance shot. Danny almost says, I can do the same thing two, two minutes later. More or less kills off the game 4-2. Modest had a huge chance to make it 4-3, but at the same time, Leipzig was also wasteful. I think the game could have well ended 6-3, 7-3 or something like that, if everyone was on the top of their uh, conversion game. So with that final result, we can say, yeah, uh, nothing, and if you look at the table, nothing really changed, but at least the favorites, there were many goals scored, so, and uh, some nice goals in there. But if we look now at the table, Bayern, yeah, uh, more or less certainty that they are champions, uh, for sure they're in the Champions League. Dortmund and Leipzig also look very strong uh, qualifiers for the Champions League. Uh, Gladbach, due to a lower rating, still a little bit behind. Leverkusen also, the schedule might not be in favor of Gladbach having to play Bayern again. Um, but, you know, so does have... Um, Le Le Leverkusen also has Bayern still to play. But, yeah... Um, it's pretty open between those two. Uh, note that Wolfsburg and Hoffenheim have minimal chances to qualify for the champ Champions League, but given that the point uh, distance, it's between the top five. One of um, probably one of Gladbach and Leverkusen will fall out. Much tighter the race for uh, the battle for relegation, where Werder's win uh, for the first time in a long time system below 50% being relegated. And Düsseldorf is now a little bit shaking there, and also Mainz is dropping down. Uh, like last week, Düsseldorf was 40%, now 46%. Mainz went from 18% to 30%. It's really tight, especially with Bremen having this backup game against Frankfurt. That might be a huge thing, because if Bremen wins that one, then they suddenly level on points with Mainz and would move out of the relegation zone. So a uh, huge uh, game coming up midweek. Hertha continues their great form. They might not go anywhere. Maybe um, Europa League that is uh, well in there. They are pushing at least to that. Uh, Schalke on the other side is dropping. And as I said, Frankfurt with that win gets some, uh, some somewhere. And I think the table starts more looking a little bit like we would have expected it. So, let's finish this video in the second Bundesliga. Uh, boy, it was seemingly almost drama. Uh, to set it up already on uh, Saturday, Kiel against Bielefeld was a really crazy game where Bielefeld uh, initially was the better team and got a 1-0 lead. But then Kiel gets the equalizer early in the second half and then they have a glorious chance. Wide open goal, the guy can puts it on the crossbar uh, from a really short distance and you think, yeah, Kiel has them all on the ropes, but towards the end, Billy Feld uh, collects themselves and in stoppage time gets the win that more or less, as we will see, will seal their st uh, status as a Bundesliga team next year. On Saturday, uh, on Sunday, uh, you know, I saw it then a little late because I was not really planning on it because Hamburg against Wiesbaden and Stuttgart against Dresden, this is top teams against bottom dwellers. I didn't expect much. But um, Heidenheim, our 
It's also the fourth uh, guy. It uh, did not have much trouble beating them 3-0, although there was a short period it could make it, um, they could have been 2-1. Um, Stuttgart also did have rather minimal problems with Dresden. Uh, they just got the um, winning goal rather late. Nice jersey matchup, I have to say. But Hamburg against Wiesbaden, Ooh, this was not easy because Wiesbaden uh, twice no, uh, once took the lead, immediately Kinsombi uh, equalized. Then Poyan Palo, who already scored against Stuttgart, gets the 2-1. And do you think Hamburg is well on, on the way? No, through a penalty, Scheffler again equalizes. And at that point, Heidenheim had already a clear lead and Hamburg was suddenly only in fourth place. They were second at the beginning of this week. But Kinsombi gets the winner for Hamburg and yeah. A big let off for four for them because that would have definitely put them into trouble. Now, if we look at the standings in the second Bundesliga, uh, Bielefeld more or less through. Uh, they will go into um, into the Bond Bundesliga and Stuttgart now with those two huge wins this week, especially against Ham Hamburg, also looks pretty much set. Although it's not that easy because they're only three points ahead of a non-promotion. Uh, playoff spot. Hamburg, yeah, that was a vital win for them. So Hamburg is in there, is probably the other team that will go up because Heidenheim is not given much chance by 5.38. And yeah, I, you have the entire t t table there, doesn't look good for Dresden, although they have many games in hand and also Wiesbaden, but you know, I'm second Muslim, I'm mostly concerned with promotion. Darmstadt also, their hopes, their slim hopes for promotion uh, with a late equalizer yeah, took a big hit. So. I think it will be, uh, Bielefeld is up, Stuttgart probably, and then between HSV and Heidenheim. Let's see about that. Anyway, let me know what you watched and whether you agree with my assessments. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.